Hello everyone and welcome to another Irish Sports Daily video. In this one, we're going to be talking instant reaction to the Lorenzo Styles uh, transfer news. He's going. He has entered the uh, transfer portal and he's going to be leaving Notre Dame ahead of the spring game tomorrow. I just wanted to give some quick thoughts on what that might mean for him, what that means for the Notre Dame football team, and what they are uh what they're losing in lorenzo styles um obviously this is a tough blow for a player that was seen to have um, immense potential for the Notre Dame football team as a as especially as a recruit came in out of washington close to a top 100 player i think he was somewhere around uh 115 overall in his recruiting class in 2021 had a really bright start to the 2021 season um in his career uh, especially at the latter half uh against usc Caught a lot of passes against USC, made a lot of plays, obviously had the huge bowl game against Oklahoma State in the Fiesta Bowl. And I think a lot of people, myself included, thought that that was going to be a springboard towards a wide receiver one type of career. And um, that didn't happen uh, the, the next year. He struggled quite a bit, um, especially catching the football. He had six drops last year, which led all wide receivers. Um, the only other receiver to, catch, uh, to drop a pass last year was – uh, Dion Colsey, who had uh, one drop um, in nine tar in, in ten targets, um, he didn't have the greatest um, contested catches numbers. He was only one of six throughout his career. Uh, he finishes his Notre Dame career with 54 catches for 684 yards, 12.7 uh, yards per reception, and just the two touchdowns. So uh, last year was, I think, disappointing for a lot of people, probably himself included. Um, and his snap counts uh, went down. Uh, quite a bit from earlier in the season. Um, he started, you know, he, he, he got a ton of snaps at the start of last year. And then that steadily got smaller and smaller as other players got bigger roles. Um, Deion Colsey for one, uh, Tobias Merriweather was also inserted into the lineup. Um, and then, you know, there was the, uh, there was, you know, Braden Lindsay couldn't unseat Braden Lindsay on the field. And then uh, Jaden Thomas also was uh, receiving more and more snaps. Also Notre Dame went to a lot of two tight end stuff later in the year as well. Um, that helped out. So his, his snap numbers went down um, and in turn, his production went down. And I think a lot of people saw that there was a change in body language as well, right? He didn't have the greatest body language um, throughout the year. Um, and that, you know, that, that led to a lot of speculation about his happiness. I think there were, there were talks uh, even, even before, uh, last season about, you know, there were the rumors last off season about him moving on and he decided to stay at Notre Dame and, and that didn't really work out. And so we thought there was going to be a, a kind of a rebound in the, in the spring, this spring. Um, and it started, it started well, people talked about the, uh, you know, there was reports, um, from, from Irish sports daily talking about his body language and how he seemed to be bought in at that point. And, um, he was, he was working hard, he had a good attitude and that sort of thing. And, and everyone welcomed that. Um, and I think things were kind of thrown for a loop a little bit when it when it came out that he was practicing at cornerback, right? It's, it, it's a position that um, was pretty deep, uh, not just deep, but it had a lot of young depth, right? And Ben Morrison, uh, Jaden Mickey, Chance Tucker, and um, incoming freshman uh, Christian Gray also. So uh, And Micah Bell is also coming into the fold. And I think the people felt really strongly about the Notre Dame, uh, Notre Dame cornerback um you know, quarterback room going into 2023, right? With with upperclassmen Cam Hart and Clarence Lewis as well, had a lot of good options there, right? And so, the idea of Lorenzo Styles at that point switching over to corner um, felt a little bit f felt a little bit off. In my opinion, it felt a little bit off as far as the timing. Obviously, the skill set, right? A lot of people pointed out that he was a very good corner in high school, and that is true, right? Uh, he he had a he had a great career as a high school player at cornerback, but you know, to go into your junior year without a red shirt to change positions like that. It just, there's something about that seemed off, uh, at least for me personally, but you, you can understand this, the scheme fit and him wanting to do it. Right. So the potential was there and you felt like, well, maybe they can make this happen. Right. They're, they're excited about it. And, um, they, you know, it's something that Notre Dame can be made work. Um, obviously that did not happen. Right. He is now entered the portal. He will not be playing in the spring game tomorrow. Which is um, which is a blow to the gold team, that's for sure. Um, uh, Sam Hartman's gonna he, he need to find another receiver for him to throw to, and another DB to uh, cover the blue team wide receivers. But um, so he so he leaves the team, and so I I don't think it's much of a blow to the cornerback room because they he was unexpected, right? He, he, they didn't have a hole at corner. They didn't have a hole um, 
you know, to the field or the boundary, right? They have numbers, they have talent, they have young talent, they have experienced talent. So I don't think it means much for the cornerback room, but for the receivers, um, I think this, this, this creates something of a void, right? I mean, you, you had, you know, going into the spring, Notre Dame had five experienced wide receivers who had received, you know, pretty extensive playing time at the, uh, at the high, you know, power five SBF FBS level, which is, um, you know, Caleb Smith, senior, um, Jaden Thomas, Tobias Merriweather, Dion Colsey, and, um, and Lorenzo Styles. Caleb Smith is out. He has taken a medical retirement and Lawrence La Lorenzo Styles is out. Right. So that leaves three wide receivers. Um, I think Chris Tyree's move now to wide receiver is, I think that's going to be permanent. I, I don't see him dabbling at running back anymore. Um, I think he needs to stay. And it's, you know, the, the reports out of, out of camp from what we've heard from Chris Tyree, uh, those are obviously very positive now and, and they're seen in a much different light now that, you know, cause look at, uh, I think Lorenzo styles, one thing that he was always very good at when he wasn't completely catching the ball was he was very good uh, after the, after he had the ball in his hands, right? Run after catch uh, on reverses and that sort of things in the, in the bubble screen game. He was very good at that and they need to replace that. Right. And so that's where Chris Tyree, I think comes in. That's where I think a lot more touches for Chris Tyree come in. I think that his role on the Notre Dame football team in 2023 expands quite a bit. Um, I think you could even see him starting at this point, frankly, um, if it's not going to be a Jaden Thomas in the slot, if Jaden Thomas is going to be playing the boundary, um, cause there's a, there's a, there's kind of a void of boundary as well, right. With Jaden Thomas, could he play more boundary? Could Chris Tyree move in the slot to buy Tobias Merriweather to the field? Um, I think that's something that we could see from the Notre Dame football team a lot more in 2023. Um, and obviously this puts more of a spotlight on the freshmen as well. Jaden Greathouse, Braylon James, Enrico Flores. And those, those three um, have really shown themselves in the spring so far. We've heard nothing but rave reviews from the coaches. Um, I think their teammates are impressed by what they're doing. And, you know, so there's been a lot of buzz around those guys. And so they're going to have that, the, you know, their roles are going to have to expand a little bit more and they're going to have to be seen as much more of a, uh, a factor going into the, uh, the summer and into the fall camp. Right. And so I think that's a, that, that's going to be a big development for, for the, for the receiving core. Um, but I think this means the most for Chris Tyree in that he is going to have a very serious role on the Notre Dame football team in the passing game in 2023. That's just my initial reaction to it. Um, there's no, there's no buffer now, right? There's no, there's no, you know, Lorenzo styles can come back and be a, a factor in the passing game. And I think um, now that that's the case, I think the Chris Tyree move to slot is permanent. Um, and look at, he's, he's obviously gone into it with a really good attitude. He's gone into it. Um, he's talked about, you know, he's dropped weight. He's gone from 197 to 190. I think he's going to probably want to drop a little bit more. If you're going to be a running back or a wide receiver, you don't need to carry that extra weight to run inside and that sort of thing. Um, so he, I think that it probably would suit him very well as well. You know, he, he doesn't need to be carrying a bunch of weight. Um, he can just, you know, be free. He can, he can, uh, be a little bit lighter. He can be a little bit more nimble, that sort of thing. And so that's, um, that's going to be a good thing for him. And so, and all of a sudden, uh, also, I think this opens up in turn, I think this opens up a, uh, an opportunity for Javon Payne to make a, a, a contribution to the football team in the running game in 2023, because I think Notre Dame needs that third back. Um, I think they wanted three last year. They used three last year. And, you know, if something were to happen to Audric Estime, something were to happen to uh, Logan Diggs, I think Jabron Payne would be, you know, the, the natural person to get those, those third snaps, um, you know, barring uh, Jadarian Price coming in, um, you know, off of his Achilles injury. And then Jeremiah Love is a true freshman. So uh, I think watching Jabron Payne in the, the scrimmage tomorrow, it just that we're going to be looking at that with a little bit more uh, critical eye in terms of how, how viable is he as a third back on this Notre Dame football team? And then of course, Chris Tyree, how viable is he going to be um, as a slot receiver? That's where that's, I think we're all going to be watching for uh, tomorrow. And that's going to be something very interesting to track as we, um, as we, as we go throughout the game tomorrow. So uh, those are my initial thoughts. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you liked what you heard, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. As always, this show is sponsored by ESQ clothing. Uh, you're going to want to, we have one more day uh, for the uh, spring promotion for, from ESQ 
Uh, if you go to esqclothing.com, you can type in ISD uh, Spring, ISD Spring into the promotion code, and that'll give you 23% off for um, your purchase. So that's it's going to be really good, really good products. Marcus Freeman wears it. Uh, the team wears it. Those on, on the suits on the team walk, on the player walk, and that sort of thing. They're wearing ESQ clothing. So check out esqclothing.com, 23% off ISD Spring. So um, with that being said, uh, thank you everyone for watching and we will talk to you tomorrow. We are going to be doing a post game show, uh, right after the game is over, just like a normal, like a, like a normal game. So the game starts at, I think two Eastern time. If it goes for two hours, then we'll go right at, uh, right. Like four 15 Eastern time. So that's when we'll go live. So look for us there. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we will.